our championship contending cars, Callum Lockie in the number 88 Ferrari. Bornock's been here, Julian. I guess that was just some kind of problem in the middle of the corner, but then we saw a shot there of the 88 Ferrari, which looked like it had some damage. Now, we don't know what that's all about, but we're getting reports back that he's perhaps made contact with the number 55. Yeah, we can just see that we're on board with it now. This is Simon Pullen in the championship leading TVR. Now, reports, if we can just get a look back at the back end of that car. Yes, we can, look, that is it. We're on board with the 66 Ferrari now. The reports we have is the 88 Ferrari and that car ahead have made contact right rear of that TVR and the front left of the Ferrari we saw earlier. But this is a really good battle now in the very tricky conditions. Right now we're looking, oh, that's a good move up the inside. Pierce Maserati making his debut in the British Championship this year. Gets a good move up the inside of the number 17 Ultima. Julian, what do you think caused that problem with Dave Warnock around that part of the track? Very tricky corner out there, Druids, and I just think he went in too, too fast too soon. It, uh, he hadn't had a good uh, look at the conditions, and just he was doing so well to be ahead of Tommy Erdos, and he just got overconfident, I feel, and just too much speed into the corner. Oh, and talk about too much speed in the corner. That's Tim Mullen, another debut driver, and he's right over the back of Steve O'Rourke's number 57 Porsche. Tim Mullen just got the call a few days ago to come and drive that AAA Ferrari at ease. I would say that that's just a little bit more than a, a, a love tap there, Julian. He is really hard into the back of that Porsche. It's cost him some time, and it's actually Stephen Watson in the GT Viper that's managed to get ahead. Unfair driving, I'd say, Julian. He's really hard into the back of that car. Yeah, almost, uh, I rule almost off there. You know, he's a cautious driver, and uh, he won't be very happy with that sort of driving tactics, and maybe the officials won't either. I think you're probably right, Julian. Oh, and that's a good move by Stephen Watson around the outside of Steve O'Rourke, and Tim Mullen is trying to follow through as they go through Lodge and down into Deer Leap. So Stephen Watson takes advantage of that situation. Oh, and he is very, very greasy there. And Tim Mullen trying to get around the outside of Steve O'Rourke. There's another Viper there, the red one now, which is being driven by Peter Cook, driving this race on his own this weekend. Just lives a couple of miles up the road from the track, there's Peter Cook. And here we are, the 66 Ferrari, just sliding up the inside of Simon Pullen, who must be having problems, having had that contact with the back of his car. But he seems to be going OK at the moment, Julian. Yeah, and we can see Steve O'Rourke now holding up a few more cars, and, um, you know, they'll be pretty uh, anxious to get by him. Yeah, very much so. We're coming up to the fast left-hander here in Ireland, and we've got rain on the windscreen here, Julian. Obviously, it's very tricky conditions already, but the rain is starting to come down, and that is going to make things very, very difficult indeed. Pulling up the inside. Well, it'll be interesting now to see, you know, we, we've, we knew that Warnock was probably on wets, and he would have been in a great position had he not spun. But these guys are going to really suffer. They've done slicks now. They've made the wrong decision, and uh, they're going to suffer badly. Yeah, I, you're absolutely right, and I think mo I think you've got it right. Most of these guys are on slick tires, and right now a few of them are piling up behind that 57 car of Steve O'Rourke, who's just being a little bit more cautious. And that is Callum Lockie in the 88 Ferrari. We know he made contact with the 55 TVR earlier. That is disastrous for their championship hopes. It looked like their race is over. Remember the championship battle between the 55 TVR, the 88 Ferrari, and that 57 Porsche in the GTO battle. 99 Porsche comes in to get wet tires, we think, going from slicks to wet. And look at this, Stephen Watson in the Viper, getting ahead of the Lister. And here we're on board, and also putting a move up the inside of the Lister. Tim Mullen in the GTO Ferrari, getting ahead of that GT car. We're now looking at the back end of that Viper as the 99 Porsche goes out of the competition. Julian, this must be so difficult when the conditions start to change like this. Very difficult to know how, you know, when to push and read the track conditions. This is where the good drivers show the true medal, though. You know, they, they've got a lot more experience, and everyone's coming in now. It's going to start pouring down. I think, yeah, that, we saw the Porsche in and pouring down. Julian, you called it absolutely right. That is Peter Cook. And look at these conditions on the commentary box here. It's absolutely pelting it down. And there is no question about it right now that this track is almost undrivable. Wet or dries, the 52 Lotus goes up there. Robert Ross just managed. Now, this is down at Knickerbrook. That's the number eight to lead of the nine is coming down in towards it. Oh, my God, that is a massive shunt between the number nine and the number eight Celine. Two cars, the teammate cars, cars in the same stable, and they have made a serious contact. That is the Viper, I think, just up there. Steve Watson, number 38. The marshal needs to be getting out of the way. And oh, my God. Wow, we just hope that he's that he's managed to be okay. And we see the Ferrari spinning off there, and he has gotten up. The Lister just getting through on its wet tires. We see Mike Newton there, I think it was just running off from the number nine car. The 55 TBR hits the Ferrari and the Celine and the Viper. Simon pulling in that car. Well, and this is Shane Lynch now. He's going off just before the previous.
new chicane before we get to Hilltop, coming out of Fulston. Now we're, we're back down here at Nickerbrook, and the, and the TBR, the Marco, excuse me, going off. The number 19 car also going off where Shane Lynch did. We can see the 57 car there, Steve O'Rourke just, and this, this is a terrible situation. Look at that, Julian. That's, that's Mike Newton just there to the right, looking at the damage. Now, he actually owns, part owns both of those Salines that are sat there in the middle of the track. So he is, thankfully, he's okay. But boy, is he going to be feeling upset about the damage to those two very, very expensive racing cars. Now, the news we have from all the drivers are, are okay. Stephen Watson is out of that car. Mike Newton's out of the car. Simon Pullen is out of the car. 79 Porsche going off with Julian. This is just this is just unbelievable. Red flags are out. They're calling a halt to this not a moment too soon. Well, we can see that, uh, you know, he's just stranded there. You can see him just trying to move the, that, that car, number eight car, out of the way at the last minute, but he can't. He stalls it, and wow, this was a hell of an impact. Boy, oh boy, they were both very, very fortunate. But, you know, completely passengers. There's absolutely nothing they seem to, that they could do about that. We're on board now with Mike Newton in the number nine car. You can just listen. You can hear the revs just spin up. There's no grip at all, and he's just a complete passenger. Wow, he just saw that yellow flag there on the outside, but you couldn't, you couldn't see that or the car down in the distance, could you? Well, I tell you, I've had that happen to me before. There's nothing you can do about it. Once you've lost control like that, the inertia just takes you wherever you're going. But here's the escape. I've never seen anything like this. This guy is very, very lucky. Yeah, he's, he's, sure. he's oblivious that the car's coming up behind him. He's been told to get out of the way. And amazing how he just managed to flip over the back of that car. I can't believe it. Oh, and I tell you what, I think because of the damage to the back end of the Viper, it was up in the air, and, and he managed to almost slide underneath it. That was an unbelievable escape. In these situations, you're much safer actually staying in the car and trying to get no one on board with the Ferrari. Wow, what an impact. Oh, golly, that was, that was huge. Here we see it again from outside. And that was that. That was on board with the Ferrari that was stationary when it got hit by the 55 TBR there, which was coming down from a hilltop. Like all the major damage here has been caused from the top end of that hill. And look at this. I mean, we're talking thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of damage. And luckily, there is n nothing more than very, very expensive racing cars. The news we have is that the Marshall's been a little bit injured, but on the whole, th there has been no serious injuries, which is extremely, extremely fortunate. Well, in these conditions, obviously no racing can take place, and they've got a heck of a lot of cleaning up to do to get this track race ready. It was unbelievable. I thought, you know, at the beginning, I thought it was the right move. I said we pulled a big gap out, and all of a sudden.